All right, here's a new idea for you, Stifler, okay? You find a girl, you two become best friends, and you don't bother counting how many times you have sex with each other. You just laugh at the people that do count. Here's a new idea for you. I'll get you a spoon so you can eat my ass. American Pie 2 is a 2001 sequel to the 1999 classic comedy film. We rejoin Michigan friends Jim, Kevin, Oz, and Finch as they complete their first year of college. As summer break begins, each of the four have different experiences and challenges that they must face. Jim, played by Jason Biggs, receives a call from Nadia, played by Shannon Elizabeth, who is traveling around the United States and plans on meeting up with him at the end of summer. He also continues to receive unsolicited advice from his father, Noah, played by actor Eugene Levy. Kevin, played by Thomas Ian Nicholas, is having trouble getting over his old high school girlfriend, Vicky, once again played by actress Tara Reid. She, alongside her friend Jessica, played by Natasha Lyonne, finds herself feeling awkward around Kevin as well. Oz, played by Chris Klein, is still in a committed relationship with Heather, played by actress Mina Suvari. Heather is headed to Europe for a summer abroad studying program in Spain. Paul Finch, played by Eddie K. Thomas, has begun to study Tantra and still finds himself pining for his one sexual conquest. Stifler's mom. What the fuck are you doing in here? Stifler, just relax. You get out of my house! Steve Stifler, played once again by Sean William Scott, invites the four to another one of his house parties. This time, the group feels different since they're college guys. Hey, I remember you. Oh, do you now? <laughs> You're that guy who blew his load on the internet. <laughs> Splat. Oh, wait, Nadia, don't go. Splat. <laughs> Stifler, on the other hand, has not changed one bit. Sherman! Okay, Stifler, take your shot. Uh -huh. No, come on, man. I'm really happy to see you. All right. <laughs> you stupid fuck! <laughs> However, Stifler gets another comeuppance, this time in the form of John Cho's warm stream of piss. Dude, the line's too long. I'll never make it. It's gotta happen now. Get my back. I right, go. Clap it off. Hello. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you. Close your eyes and get ready. Oh, well, I'm ready. <laughs> <sighs> oh, that's it. Bathe the Stiffmeister. Oh. How did you get it so nice and warm? Ah! Oh! I can taste the bubbles. Ugh. Actually, I can't. Much better. Wait a second. Let's go. Thanks, Matt. Christy? Oh, fuck. Eventually, the police shut down Stifler's party. Kevin, feeling that things are changing too rapidly for his liking, asks his brother Tom, played again in a small role by Casey Affleck, for advice. Tom says that back in 1993, he and his buddies rented a house on Lake Michigan, had a blast, and capped it all off with a huge lakefront party at the end of summer. Guys, I got it. Pack your bags. For what? We're moving to the lake. This inspires Kevin to move the four men to a lake house on Lake Michigan. Guys, I've been running these numbers here, and I don't think the four of us can afford this place. Not on summer jobs. Well, I, I kind of thought of that. So, I invited someone else. Oh, yeah! The Fifth are coming back to Grand Harbor! Jim, Kevin, Oz, Finch, and Stifler all head to Lake Michigan for a fun-filled summer break, while also taking a summer job painting houses. Along the way, many hilarious events unfold. Jim decides to track down his prom date, Michelle Flaherty, played by Allison Hannigan, to get advice on his sexual performance in preparation for Nadia's arrival. You remember, was I, was I any good that, that night? Oh, wow. Jeez. 
How could I forget? You sucked. His travels take him to Tall Oaks Band Camp, where he is injured, and the camp director, played by Hill Street Blues actor George Weiner, mistakes him for a mentally disabled trombone player named Petey. No, 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 Petey, no, no. There <laughs> we go. All right. All right. Come on now. A little encouragement. <laughs> Right to this spot. Uh, folks, folks, he's, uh, he's just uh, a little nervous. <laughs> well, this isn't right. Just, just, just blow on it, kid. All right, here we go. Special my ass. Stifler becomes convinced that two attractive women living in a house they are painting are lesbians. Lesbians? <laughs> Lesbians live here. You know, Mr. Homophobic Wizard, that it is possible for women to hold hands and not be gay. Hey, Finch, I don't want to hear about you and your boyfriends. Go jerk off. Unnecessary. One day when they step out, he sneaks in and Jim and Finch follow. Now's my chance. I need confirmation. Stickler! Hey, man, what are you doing? Ah, oh, go get him. You asked Stickler, get out! Stickler! Stifler. Stifler. Oh shit, dude, I found a dildo! The people demand rubber dicks! Finch, help! Finch! This event culminates in a hilariously memorable scene where the two girls, talking on the guy's walkie talkies, play a game of sexual quid pro quo. Domestics. What the hell is that? I don't know, call 911. No, 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 no
Filmed in early 2001, this movie was directed by James B. Rogers, who had worked on the first movie, and was written by the film's first writer, Adam Hertz. The original draft of American Pie 2 found the guys taking a trip to find Nadia in Europe. This idea was eventually scrapped. The American Pie 2 script was handled with CIA-like secrecy, and if you were deemed worthy of sneaking a peek, a messenger would arrive at your office and remain posted outside your door until you were done with it and take it back. Universal was so strict that each script had the actor's last name watermarked on each page in big letters so that nobody would copy it. After reading the script, the actor's agent was then required to immediately FedEx the script back to Universal. There was a lot of hype for this film after the tremendous success of the first movie in the summer of 1999 and then its success on VHS and cable when I first saw it in the year 2000. The original cut of this film had two storylines which ended up being completely deleted from the final film. The first storyline involved both Oz and Heather cheating on each other. Heather would have sex with a guy she met in Spain. Oz, don't get so paranoid. I'm not. I mean, listen, you're barely there, and I don't know what's going on. And Oz would end up meeting a girl by Lake Michigan, played by actress Chania Jolson. Oz! Can you come help me with something for a sec? Yeah, you bet. Hold on. Make me proud. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I didn't... Hey, <laughs> I was just wondering if you could help me tie this up. It's kind of complicated. <laughs> Oz would be tempted by this stunning alabaster-skinned brunette. Hey, um, do you just want to hang out for a while? Just me and you? And eventually, after fighting with Heather over the phone, he humps the crap out of her. When Heather arrives back home from Europe, they would admit that they both cheated on each other. And turns out she cheated on him, and boy, oh boy, did that not work. Something happened in Barcelona. Like before I came back. Test audiences absolutely hated this storyline. So it was replaced with the two attempting phone sex a few times and having a happy reunion when Heather returns. Hey. Hi. Oh. What are you doing here? I was going to pick you up at the airport in like two hours. I took an earlier flight. I thought I'd surprise you. Yeah, you did. The second storyline revolved around the arrival of Stifler's dad, Rick Stifler. Three actors were in contention for the role. One was actor John C. McGinley, the other was actor Bill Paxton, and the third and final actor who was chosen for the role was Chris Penn. Chris Penn filmed a ton of scenes as Stifler's dad, but the humor just didn't jive with the test audience. Ladies, come on in. The water's great. Don't be bashful. Come on, you jump in now. I'll let you shave my back. Eventually, the entire subplot and character of Stifler's dad was cut from the final movie. Upon its release on August 10th, 2001, American Pie 2 surpassed the box office gross of the original movie and made a worldwide total of $288 million on a budget of only $30 million. This made it an enormous box office success, bigger than the original. I saw this movie in theaters with my father on a Saturday one week after its release, roughly August 18th, 2001. I remember going to see this, and I remember being in a packed theater and having people rolling in laughter during the movie. I still remember my father was laughing so hard he had tears pouring down his face. I remember very vividly the scene where Jim and Nadia are finally alone inside of a lighthouse. We are just, how do you say, twitting our horns? Actually, that is quite difficult. How do you mean? This one time at band camp? I... When Jim's character said that line, there was an audible gasp in the movie theater. Those types of theater reactions are very rare, especially nowadays, and I still remember the audience being stunned at the direction the writers were taking the movie, and it would change the entire course of the American Pie film series. How's this for a bad camp story? 
If I can be like that. This is one of the last films released into theaters to show the World Trade Center towers before their destruction. In the scene where Nadia calls Jim from New York City, they actually filmed in Los Angeles and superimposed the Twin Towers in the background. Just 32 days after this movie was released in theaters, both of those towers would be destroyed. In fact, this film is one that is frequently discussed during 9-11 anniversaries because it was one of the biggest hits and one of the last big hits in movie theaters in the summer of 2001. Most of the August and September 2001 editions of entertainment magazines had pictures of the cast members of American Pie 2. Within days, all of the magazine covers around the world would completely change with images of the attacks. The memories of seeing American Pie 2 in theaters around August 18, 2001 make going to see American Pie 2 one of my very last pre-9-11 memories. Due to the fact that this movie made more money than the original and the fact that it's as funny if not funnier than the first one, I will go ahead and give American Pie 2 the same star rating as the original. 10 out of 10 stars. I highly recommend American Pie 2.